Welcome to Becoming You. Super excited about our powerhouse guest today, one of our co-authors for our best-selling book, Becoming You. We have Lisa Skye, literally like the blue sky in the house today. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you so much. I say like stars in the sky. So I have a question for you. Is that your birth name or did you change your name Ooh, to Lisa stage Sky? Stage name. It's a stage name. I was an actress when I was a child, so Lisa Sky, kind of cute. And as I got older and I started teaching yoga and Pilates and designing jewelry, I needed a, another name, a stage name, better. So I turned it into Lisa Sky. My real name, my maiden name, as they say, is Walensky. Well, I love that you chose sky. Like we all have this personal relationship with the sky. I love it. It has a really nice ring to it, Lisa's sky. Now you and I met back during the COVID shutdown and we met on an interesting app. We met on an app by the name of Clubhouse. And for our listeners that are not familiar with it, the advantages over Zoom is you can just go on without having your video camera on. And this became the hottest thing ever when we were all home and looking for things to do and ways to connect with other people. So I had the opportunity to meet you on Clubhouse. They have these things called clubs and then rooms, and you get to hear some somebody's voice, which means you get to actually connect with their soul, literally. And I know you're all about soul. You can feel their heart. So tell me about that. How did you even discover Clubhouse and start doing that? Like I did it because I had a lot of activity I was doing on on Facebook. So what made you start doing the Clubhouse thing? I had a friend who told me about it and said, you need to get on here. You need to get on, listen, be active, meet people. It is the place for everything, not just spiritual. It's music. It's politics. It's fashion. It's all about love and light and people. And like you said, really getting to feel people's hearts when you hear their voices. And it was something that... I could do it three in the morning if I couldn't sleep or if I just felt like connecting and was a little lonely or just felt like sharing my love and light, which I love to do. And that's it. I, I got hooked. I did too. And it reminded me, it reminded me, it reminded me of a living podcast. It was like being in a podcast studio with 200 other people and everybody has the microphone. Well, not everybody because they would divide it up. So there was a stage, a platform, but you could have unlimited number of people on the stage. And then there was the audience. And then there was the subcategory. If you were followed by somebody on stage, then you had like premier VIP seating in the clubhouse room. So it was a really very interesting time and a way for people to connect with one another. And you mentioned the 24 hour a day thing. I think that that is really important too, because we get lonely in the middle of the night, like, and different people have different zones, like active in the morning at night. And it became a way to plug in to personal and professional growth. So here we are, we meet on Clubhouse. You're in New York. There are people from all around the world. All different countries are there. You're in New York. I'm in South Florida. You visit in South Florida and we have this Clubhouse meetup. So what did you think? You're meeting all these people for the first time live and you've never even seen their face, not even on Zoom. It seemed so natural. It seemed as if I knew you forever and it just continued. We are so lucky that now we're neighbors and there's a whole group of us down here who are Clubhouse friends, but as we say on Clubhouse, IRL, in real life. And that's what it's all about, right? Real life. And this is as real as it gets. You know, the the theme of our show is Becoming You. And in the philosophy of Becoming You, 
is the foundation that we are better together, that we are not just a I or a me, we are a we and we are an us. But as we become the best version of ourselves, what happens is a light bulb moment goes off and you realize you can't do this thing called life and do it by yourself. What inspired you to be part of this book project? Well, all I can think about is just how it lifts me up. It just really brings so much like energy and it takes you to another level, like even just the book cover, right? We have, it looks like almost like sparkles. You know, I'm all about the sparkles and it's like enlightenment and excitement. And it's just amazing that being a part of this on so many levels really just, I always talk about your soul, but it's like your soul gets to be the brightest and best and people get to see you in not just the best version of yourself, but they get to hear what's going on inside your head, what's going on inside your heart. And it's all about alignment and just getting your message out there and sharing it with the world. I know for me in putting together these book projects with my partner, Patricia Wooster of Wooster Publishing, it was a heart filled project, a way to bring amazing people together that are impact driven like you, Lisa, that wants to make a bigger difference in the world. Now, your chapter is about being true to your soul. What does that mean to you? What it means is being able to express myself, being able to share the way that I am true to myself and the way that I handle the ups and downs of life. And I said it in the book that life happens for me, not to me and manifesting and all kinds of amazing things that happen to me, the growth, the experiences and just making really good decisions and being true to my soul, being true to myself, making a decision like moving to Florida and packing it up, being a northerner and deciding that this is where my entire life, I always wanted to live down here with the palm trees and the sunshine and people who are happy and people who love life. And, and I did it. And I was really glad that I can share that with everybody in the book. And I hope that other people who have a dream get to live their dream and live their best lives. I want to explore that a little bit deeper. You moved here without really knowing anybody, just a handful of people. And the whole process of being part of a collaborative co-author book, what has it been like to be part of that community? Well, besides the people who live here in South Florida, having new friends that live all over the world and being able to just get together and do our book signings and just being connected, whether it's virtually, whether it's in person, and it's just been amazing. And I've really enjoyed it. And I'm just so happy that I did it. We are so happy that you did it as well. In your chapter, you talk about what you envision for your future. And one of those goals has been to use the microphone, use your voice, to be a professional speaker, now, I don't know how many times you spoke prior to our first event, Unleash Your Superpower. I'm curious how many times. I know that you had taken the stage on Clubhouse many, many times. So were you already a speaker? What was that like for you? I have to say, not exactly. As I mentioned earlier, I did teach yoga and Pilates, but yoga more where you can get up there and really get spiritual and talk to your class, not really an audience, but I did have usually large classes at some of the big gyms that I worked at. But, and I also mentioned I was an actress when I was a child, so I'm not shy and it's not like I have never been on stage, but the way that we do it now, more like we call them masterminds, right? It's something that I've been a part of, I've been in the audience, and I just really admired everybody else who gets up there and they had a chance to do it. And like I said, I just manifest things and I know in my heart, mind, soul, that I wanna do something and I do it. And here we are. 
becoming a professional speaker for our listeners, what would be the reason why somebody would want to speak? Because that is right up there. Number one, I think, is is death or public speaking. I mean, they're like one's number one and one's number two. Is that surprising to you? Wow. I definitely don't put them in the same category. I think it's exciting. I think it's fun. I think it's incredibly fabulous to have the opportunity to do that on every level, not just getting your message out there, but the whole process. It's like a show. It's like a, not a movie, but it's amazing having this opportunity to get up there and collaborate with other people. I love the way your forum, the way what we did at our last event, where sometimes it's people ask questions, sometimes people get up there and talk about their chapters. So there's just so many different opportunities and ways to navigate this whole world. And it's, it's happening and we're doing it. And I'm, again, I, I can't stop saying it enough. I'm just glad that I'm a part of it. And I met you. Ditto back. Do you believe that life is about destiny or is it fate? Ooh. Hmm. Is destiny and fate really different? What is the definition? Hmm. I like both those world words. I almost said worlds. <laughs> <laughs> they are different worlds, actually. <laughs> really. I think about fate as like things that are pre predestined and yes. destiny is, is more that you follow an urge inside and then you're manifesting while you're in the process of following your heart and following your desire. We also talk about the universe a lot. And as I said, it doesn't happen to me. It happens for me. Um, luck maybe sometimes, is it? Who knows? I entered a raffle the other day. There were a hundred other people and I won. And I knew, I felt it in my heart. I said, I'm going to win. And you know what? It's not the first time. I feel like the universe wants to reward me. The universe wants me to see the rainbow in the sky. The universe wants me to just see beauty and witness it, feel it, absorb it, and just appreciate it and have so much gratitude for every moment, every breath. And I'm just really thankful and um, the universe it's just really good to me, and I'm really happy. Let's talk about setbacks and struggles. Someone who is listening today might be at a dark period of their life, in a dark period. What insights could you give them? Well, I'll tell you this. I never expected to be writing a chapter and sharing a couple of my, again, I don't like to call them setbacks, but experiences that weren't necessarily positive. Some people might call them trauma. And I said, you know, you go through what you grow through. And, you know, when you're in that place that I call it quicksand, where you don't want to be, you want to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I said, that was my mantra. You have to keep thinking there's a light at the end of the tunnel and you're going to get out, whether it was in my chapter I talked about when I had to, I was moving and I was purging and I just, it was just overwhelming and there was so much that I had to do and accomplish. And it's very hard when somebody moves or has some life altering event that makes them have to, you know, get to the next level and catapult themselves out of wherever they are. So I just want to say that you can do it. That's, that's it. You know, just like, I know it seems so cliche, but uh, Nike says, just do it. But it's like, you can do it. Just have faith and really just be able to see, envision, again, manifest and just know that when you're going through something really tragic, and I know this again may seem cliche, it could be worse. It could be it could be 10 times worse, but we're going to get through it. And you have to have that will to make it happen and see yourself, visualize yourself in a better place. In your chapter, you talk about, in, in particular, what you just mentioned there, I think is very powerful to take in, is that when you had a fire, and you had a fire, so you lost your possessions, but at the same time, a plane went down. So 
you're thinking about all those people that lost their loved ones and their life, all the people that lost their life on their plane, a couple hundred people, you know, so you mentioned the fire. And then you also mentioned that you and a friend, you were traveling and then you were held up by, uh, they, they took a knife to your throat and they held you and for, and they robbed you and you were able to focus on that. They took your jewelry and your possessions, but that you're alive. That is a way to look at life through those lens to, to look around and say, I'm grateful now it could be so much, so much worse. And you do share that story. So powerfully in your chapter, be true to your soul. I, I think you give people a perspective to follow. Many people look at someone and they go, well, look at them. You know, they're young, they're pretty, they're successful. They, they, they have all this judgment around them without being able to peel back the curtain and say, wow, they have walked the walk. They have had the challenges in their life. Going forward, talking about envisioning and strength and resilience, those two pieces. So you envision a better future, health and happiness and all the things, and yet you need resilience and fortitude to be able to make those things happen. What are some of the ways that you balance those two things together? Well, lucky, lucky me, I come from a family that gave me not just a lot of support when I was going through both of those hard times, but the positivity. And I really feel like it just comes from within. It comes from many years of always hearing my mother say, it's going to be all right. You're going to be all right. And she always used to say things like, it'll get better. Or if if it, like, let's just say I wasn't feeling well. She said, it'll go away. You'll be fine. You know, so everything was always it's going to be all right. It's going to be okay. So there's no like tragedy. There is no, I don't even know right what the right word for it is, but just seeing the positive and not the negative. And, and really that's how I get through every day. I love your mom said that, yes. that that's the voice in your head. That's the seed that she planted. And if you're someone that doesn't have a parent that passed on those amazing values, then take the message from Lisa's mom and imprint that like a tattoo into your own brain. Cause it doesn't have to be in our lives. It could be somebody else being a role model like you are for so many that you, you live your truth Thank and you're you. true to your soul. I love that. Living your truth. That's just a beautiful phrase. And Being blessed with two beautiful daughters, Um, really glad that I can share all the things I learned from my parents with them, and I see them. I see them thriving. I see them really, I say, learning from my experiences, and of course, you know, we are an example for our children, and I'm glad that I can see them thriving. Amazing. So where can people find you? I know they can find you where there's art and all things that are love and light. So physically for those that are in South Florida and those that are online. And hey, listen, if you're not in South Florida, you need to come visit South Florida anyway. So where can people find you? Well, we really didn't talk at all about my clothing line that I had started um, when I was up in New York. So I do have this clothing line called Soul's Disguide. Talk about the soul. And that's clothing with a soul. And I can be found on my website and of course my Instagram or my Facebook and it's S-O-U-L-S-T-I-C-E Sky. And we'll have the link posted in the show notes. So if you're here in South Florida, you can catch Lisa, her clothing line, her art, all the amazing things that she does. And also you want to pick up Becoming You and you want to read Lisa's chapter. Being true to your soul. That would be fabulous. Can I just read my my little quote here? Yes. Well, it's not a little quote. It's a powerful quote. It's powerful and it's long. It's a mouthful, as I said. The world's a stage and staying mindful and present 
is the key to finding opportunities to feel most alive. That's so beautiful. That is a tweetable for sure. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and, you know, I don't want to change the subject too much. I don't know if we're wrapping it up, but um, you, you keep mentioning my art. Well, my art is that I was an art dealer in Manhattan. And when I moved down here, I didn't even know that I'd be working in an art gallery. So here I am dealing contemporary art, right? Writing a book, making clothing, making amazing friends and being on this podcast. And it really is living my best life. Loved having you on today. Lisa Sky in the house. Thank you so much. And for our listeners, go ahead. And if today's podcast resonated with you, then subscribe, share this podcast, family and friends. We are on Apple, iTunes, and all over the internet. So thank you so much, everyone, for being here. And thank you for having me. Here at Becoming You, we are all about self-image, identity, reinventing yourself in every area of your life. And number one is your health. I think everybody would agree with that. Fitness is so important and it gets confusing out there. There There's so many different options. Strength training, weight training is so critically important to become the best version of yourself. It has a spillover into every area of your life. Locally here in South Florida, we have Just Lift Studios as one of our premier sponsors. This gym is first personally my gym. And the reason why I love it so much, I can't even call it a gym. It is a one-stop shop for your health and well-being. I used to have to decide, am I going to spend my time in the morning with my personal growth or am I going to make it in to do my workout? Now I have found a way to combine them both in such a short period of time. For me, if I can knock it out in an hour, that is a win, win, win at just Lift Studios, that's it. You walk in, they do this motivational talk before you even get started. They have a theme every month. I get so psyched. I get so jazzed. They talk about your morning routine. They talk about visualization. They talk about all the things to becoming the best version of yourself. And then you go from the mindset piece into the physical, you do weight training, it's personalized, it's one-on-one in a group setting, every body type, every stage of life, young, it doesn't matter, any age, older, every age bracket. I just love the studio and they have a special gift for you. When you use the code, which is your guest it, becoming you, you get a free pass to try out the studio. And when you purchase a 10 session package, you get two free sessions. So thank you so much to Just Lift Studios. We love you.